But as easy as slow cookers are, they do come with rules. Here are some of the mistakes everyone seems to make when they use slow cookers, so you can be sure not to make them yourself. We get it. Whatever's cooking in the slow cooker has your whole house smelling delicious. Gather up your willpower, though. You need to resist peeking inside. It took your slow cooker longer than you might think to work its way up to the target temperature. And lifting the lid for even a second lets out most of that hot air. Too much peeking means a reduced temp inside the slow cooker and more time needed for your dish to finish cooking. In fact, each time you lift that lid, you add 30 minutes to the time you need to cook your food. Those fancy cuts of meat can certainly have their place at your dinner table, but there's no need to spring for the good stuff when you're shopping for a slow cooker meal. Since slow cookers cook low and slow, they make even the toughest meats tender and juicy. So grab a low-cost cut and let it cook all day. The resulting dish will be so fall apart tender and full of flavor, no one will guess you bought the bargain beef. Be honest, if a recipe says to sear your meat before you drop it in the slow cooker, do you do that or do you skip it? It seems reasonable to skip it. It's going to cook all the way through in the slow cooker, right? Well, skipping the searing step does change the flavor of your dish and not necessarily for the better. According to the cooking site Kitchen, searing your meat before slow cooking it caramelizes the outside of each piece of meat, adding texture and an extra layer of flavor. If you've never seared your meat before slow cooking it, you really don't know what what you're missing. But after you've tried it once, you'll never skip that step again. Chicken cooked with the skin in an oven or pan usually ends up gorgeous and crispy. When you're cooking in a slow cooker, you're probably going to end up with a soft, rubbery outside that's anything but appetizing. If you want to be able to serve dinner straight from your slow cooker with no extra steps, use skinless chicken when you slow cook. Fortunately, there's a workaround. If you don't mind the extra step, transfer the cooked chicken from the slow cooker to a broiler pan and cook it under your oven's broiler for just a few minutes until the skin is deliciously golden brown and crispy. Yes! With all the props given to fresh herbs, it's kind of refreshing to know that dried herbs are actually the preferred go-to seasoning in slow cooker meals. Since they do their best when cooked over long periods of time, dried herbs are the easy winners when it comes to your favorite slow cooked recipes. That's not to say you can't use fresh herbs in a slow cooker recipe, just don't add them at the beginning. There won't be anything left when it's time to serve. Instead, toss those in toward the end of the cooking time, so they're still fresh and full of flavor when you sit down to eat. Slow cookers come in different sizes, and one slow cooker does not fit every slow cooker recipe. The cooking time on each recipe counts on the fact that you're using the same size slow cooker as the recipe directs, meaning it's filled to the appropriate level. Your slow cooker should be filled halfway to three quarters of the way full. If it's not full enough, your food will end up overcooked. If it's too full, it may not cook completely or you may end up with an overflow and a big mess on your kitchen counter. Dairy products don't do well warm, and the slow cooker is no exception. If you add ingredients like milk, cheese, cream, sour cream, or cream cheese too early in the cooking process, you'll have a curdled, disgusting mess at the end. To save your dish without sacrificing the creamy flavor you love, cook it without any dairy and then add those ingredients in during the last half hour, cooking them just long enough for them to melt and blend properly into the dish. It's usually okay to use a heavy hand when cooking with wine on the stovetop. As heavy a hand as you want, really. And then for Aunt Sandy, a bottle of white wine. That's not the case with a slow cooker, though, because the lid stays on tight and nothing really evaporates. In fact, when you add wine to a slow cooker recipe, you'll taste more of the wine than you would in a stove cooked dish. For that reason, it's best to skip the wine, or add it sparingly, unless you're really after that boozy tang. As fabulous as it sounds, it's not a good idea to put frozen food, especially meat, in your slow cooker. If your slow cooker is full of frozen food, it'll take way too long to reach a safe temperature for consumption, meaning your food will spend longer than it should at temps that are less than safe. Don't eat that. Believe it or not, your slow cooker doesn't cook evenly all the way through. The foods at the bottom cook faster, so foods that need longer cooking times, like root vegetables, should go at the bottom of the slow cooker, followed by the meat, which cooks faster. 
Slow cookers may make cooking a breeze, but they can also make cleanup a pain. They usually end up soaking in your sink just as long as they spent cooking on your counter. And even then, you still need an awful lot of elbow grease to get them clean. Save yourself some time and use a cooking spray or a slow cooker liner to make cleanup that much easier. Jack Bishop of America's Test Kitchen told Consumerist that using too much liquid is one of the biggest flubs people make when converting stovetop recipes to slow cooker recipes, advising, Most slow cooker recipes are better with less liquid than you would use if you were making the same thing in a pot on the stove. So that could mean draining the canned tomatoes and discarding that juice, or it might mean using less broth than you normally would for a stew or a soup. These modifications are necessary since evaporation doesn't occur when you're using a slow cooker, and all that extra liquid will only result in less concentrated flavors. If you're making beef stew or pulled pork, you probably don't care if the condensation from the lid of the slow cooker drips back down into the crock. But if you're making a dish where even the slightest amount of additional moisture could ruin it, and you're not lining the lid of your slow cooker with a paper towel, you're making a big mistake. Sara De Gregorio, author of Adventures in Slow Cooking, told BuzzFeed, the paper towels soak up the extra steam and prevent it from dripping back onto the surface of the dish. I use this when making cheesecakes and custards or eggplant parmesan. It helps ensure the breadcrumb coating on top stays crunchy. In other words, if you have a dish where crunch factor is important or where texture could be thrown off by just a few extra teaspoons of water, the paper towel is an easy piece of insurance against a fail. Pasta in the slow cooker sounds like a recipe for disaster, doesn't it? It's easy to picture cooked for hours spaghetti that is so far past al dente it's unrecognizable. Bon Appetit doesn't mince words on the topic, saying, Sure, there are slow cooker recipes for pasta dishes out there, but you definitely shouldn't attempt to make them. As much as we respect Bon Appetit's stance on all things food, sometimes slow cooker spaghetti and meatballs just needs to happen, and you're not destined for soggy spaghetti if you plan ahead. Here's the secret. Don't mix the dried pasta into the sauce until you're about 20 minutes away from mealtime. When your pasta is perfectly al dente, serve immediately. Or if you don't mind the extra pot, just cook the pasta separately and add it at the end. Either way, you've successfully avoided a mushy mess. Now, what if you could prepare a wholesome sit-down family-style meal with just a push of a button? Slow cookers are pretty basic machines. You can cook on high or low. There's no in-between. So what's the best choice for scrumptious slow-cooked meals? As the saying goes, less is more. According to Jack Bishop of America's Test Kitchen, using the high setting on the slow cooker has the potential to ruin a dish. He told Consumerist, if you want a beef stew with nice big chunks of beef, a lot of times the high setting can boil the meat and it dries out and sort of falls apart. The difference between the two settings isn't a higher temperature, it's the time it takes for the slow cooker to reach the simmer point. On high, that's around three to four hours, and on low, it's seven to eight. So imagine if your dinner is cooking away on high all day while you're at work. That meat will have been simmering for four hours longer than it needed to. Not the best way to ensure tenderness. You've got leftovers in the slow cooker. Clearly the easiest thing to do is to throw the crock into the fridge and reheat the whole shebang the next day, right? Wrong! Unless you're interested in rolling the dice on food poisoning. We get it, transferring the food to another dish means you just have one more thing to wash. But loading a still warm crock full of still warm food into the fridge means it probably won't cool fast enough, and that's where you wade into the danger zone for bacteria. Even if you've done the right thing and transferred the leftovers into shallow containers and cooled them properly, the slow cooker still isn't a safe bet for reheating. That's because any reheated foods need to reach a minimum of 165 degrees within two hours. And that's just not going to happen in a slow cooker. It's slow, remember? The USDA recommends reheating in an oven or microwave, and then using the slow cooker to keep the food warm. A little more work, sure, but it definitely beats the alternative. I did not sleep for one second last night, and I cracked the bottom of the toilet bowl. Oh.